Welcome everyone to GamerMelt. Today I've got so, so much news. Starting with the launch timing of Microsoft's Xbox Series X, the RTX 3000 launch event, new info on third-party cards, confirmed specs, and finally the first Ryzen 5000 APU benchmark. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Microsoft has confirmed in a blog post that the upcoming Xbox Series X will be launching, as a surprise to no one, in November. That's right, you won't have to wait until you're taking down the tree in what will likely make for a great South Park episode. Not only that, but it looks like the graphics critique of the upcoming Halo title didn't go unnoticed, as Microsoft is pushing back Halo Infinite to 2021. Oh, and did I say it's because of graphics? I'm sorry, I meant for the well-being of the team. Right. At least the Xbox Series X looks to be some pretty sweet hardware. Speaking of sweet hardware, why not learn what makes it actually tick with today's sponsor? Brilliant, the online learning tool that's made specifically to teach you science, math, and computer science, which means there's no better place to learn computing. And they've got something for everyone. Whether you're a beginner needing the fundamentals or a professional who's looking to delve much deeper, Brilliant is the place to be. And the best part is that they actually teach you visually. So instead of memorization, they show you how the concepts work. Plus, they offer daily challenges to keep you sharp and learning more. So don't wait. Learn the deeper side of tech by visiting brilliant.org slash gamermelt and the first 200 people who visit the link get 20% off the annual premium today. Next up, if you saw my recent video discussing the not-so-subtle tweet from NVIDIA's GeForce, it looks like the company has further announced their next-gen graphics event by launching a countdown on their site. The event is set for September 1st at 9 a.m. Pacific time, and obviously that's one day off from the 31st the tweet suggested, but maybe it was tweeted a bit earlier than NVIDIA intended, I don't know. But regardless, one thing is for certain, this is shaping up to be a huge event. And if you're interested, I plan on doing a live stream of it with my reactions and all of that, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated. Next up, if you're worried about a long wait on the upcoming third-party cards, don't be, as Tweaktown got some great news from multiple NVIDIA board partners. And it's that third-party cards will be releasing right alongside Founders Edition cards in September. Well, that or very shortly after. You know, it's in the same month. And as I said, more than one board partner confirmed this, so it's about as official as it can be without the actual announcement. Oh, and that means the leaked ROG RTX 3080 Ti that we recently saw likely is real, as board partners have clearly been working on it for many weeks to be prepared for a September launch. Let's just hope they have enough stock to meet demand. And the news for NVIDIA's upcoming RTX 3000 series doesn't stop there, as we have confirmation of a recent story I went over on the specs of the upcoming cards. In a new report by Chippa Forum's resident leaker WJM47196, claims to have confirmed the upcoming cards come with up to 24 gigabytes of VRAM, making these a pretty massive jump in memory. To be more specific, he claims that we can expect a 24 gigabyte, 20 gigabyte, and 10 gigabyte model in 384 bit and 320 bit memory buses. Lower down, there's also 16 gigabyte and 8 gigabyte model based on a 256 bit bus. According to video cards, multiple sources confirm the memory to be GDDR6X, but as they said, there's really no proof such memory even exists. As far as what these cards likely are in terms of naming scheme, there's been some conflicting information. Personally, I'm thinking that 24GB model is the rumored RTX 3090, which effectively replaces the RTX Titan. And before you say it, I know the 90 series traditionally means a dual card, but most leakers have suggested otherwise. Really, with 24GB, I'd hope that's the case, as a 24GB 3080Ti definitely won't be cheap. Then again, a 20GB model won't be cheap either, but 24 seems almost too high. In terms of marketing, it would make sense for NVIDIA to market the Titan as more of a gaming card, but hopefully it won't include unnecessary compute hardware. At the end of the day, these are looking to be a serious jump in terms of memory, which could indicate a big jump in performance. Time, as always, will tell. Lastly for today, the first benchmark on Amy's next-gen Ryzen 5000 APUs is here. Now, I know what you're thinking. We still don't have desktop 4th gen Ryzen. And that's true, but remember that they were likely a bit delayed thanks to the thing that shall not be named, and Ryzen 4000 APUs have actually been out for quite a while now. 
Either way, the benchmark was found and shared by resident leaker RO Game, and as you can see, it comes from the SciSoft database. Now, starting things off, I'll go ahead and say that this is only a GPU benchmark, which means we didn't learn anything about the CPU. When it comes to the integrated graphics, we're looking at 8 CUs and 512 shaders, which is the same as Renoir's best. As far as clocks, it gets to 1.85 GHz, which is 100 MHz higher than the best Renoir APU. And of course, this is likely a very early sample, so I would expect even better down the road. Now, here comes the really bad news. While we saw a document a little while back from HP claiming Ryzen 5000 APUs come with Navi, this apparently still comes with Vega. And all I can say is, why? I mean, yes, Rembrandt is rumored to use Navi, but with Tiger Lake around the corner, you'd think AMD would have planned to bring the big guns. Well, I guess not. So while that does it for today, what RTX 3000 series card, or whatever Nvidia ends up calling it, are you planning to get? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.